situation, the current culture war here in Ireland. And uh, it, it, although it's, it deals exclusively with Ireland, those of you overseas will find this useful in your own country or even in your own personal life in dealing with situations where your psyche has been corralled into a a zone of operation that wasn't set to defined by you and how to actually control the zone of operations within your own insurgency, your own insurgency. Now, in case you haven't realized now, in Ireland we're in the middle of a ferocious culture war. Uh, this was basically brought into full focus and given substantial international coverage by the recent the recent you know incorporation and implementation of something called a hate speech bill in Ireland which basically does not define anything as being hate speech and is exclusively designed to protect politicians from criticism and uh, policy implementation that they can throw a hate speech if you criticize a politician on any aspect of government, they can throw a hate speech charge at you in order to shut you up. Now, the the gauntlet was thrown down by the Prime Minister of Ireland, who the unelected Prime Minister of Ireland, Leo Varadkar, who on the eve of the, should we say, the psychic launch of the bill, deliberately made sure he was seen snogging a guy, full tongue-on-tongue -tongue action, inside the nightclub uh, with a smirk on his face as usual now this uh, what people do in their private lives is their own business but this was very much put out there as a kind of a mockery a gaslighting a burlesque of anyone who would say i don't like this guy's economic policies that's because and they would come back with that's because you're a homophobe and you will be you will receive a visit from the police or a possible fine uh, or even a custodial prison sentence so the purpose of the hate speech bill in Ireland has nothing to do with uh, protecting immigrants or minorities or refugees or anyone of any particular so-called marginalized group, which we know in reality in Western society actually the on the power structure. Now, and this is why it's been disturbingly and enthusiastically endorsed to with almost giddy delight by white Irish males who grew up here and never suffered a day of discrimination in their life. And there's a reason for this. Many of them are paedophiles and they see the hate speech law as similar to how the paedophile information exchange happened in in Britain in the 80s. They saw their final chance to legalize paedophilia and they jumped on the coattail to the left. Now they left in Britain today tries to make out that the paedophile information exchange happened by accident, that it snuck its way into left-wing politics. No, it was exclusively courted and brought in. Always remember that. Remember that paedophile legalization and sex with children was a, was a central platform of the Agenda 90 Green platform. And uh, that's just, it's all out there. Go have a look, you'll find it. So we have a green we we don't have a really a government in Ireland. What we have is a collection of politicians who have a consensus. You know that word, a consensus. And basically, the Greens are part of it as well. And a lot—it's all implementation. Of, it's two things: implementation of globalist policy, without by obliterating the Irish culture, and secondly, uh, that goes right down to obliterating genders and everything else. And secondly. The protection of paedophile politicians, civil servants and people in positions of power in Ireland by the eventual implementation of a age of consent bill, which will finally get them off the hook. You see, Ireland is, you have to remember, Ireland had, remember back in the 80s, Ireland had those horrific paedophile, sadistic paedophile problems with members of the Catholic clergy. Now, that's not to say all Catholic clergy were involved in this, of course not. But paedophiles in Ireland traditionally joined the priesthood and the nuns, That's, or, or, or sadomasochists, generally joined. T these days, they, they run for election on woke platforms and get elected. And they just, the oh, why the, you had the paedophile scandal was opened up and exposed within Irish culture. The paedophiles didn't simply dissipate, evaporate into a miasma of nothingness. No, they, they just shifted into things like the politician the political spectrum 
uh, the civil service, bureaucracy, the teaching professions, and all the public bodies. Now, and they've been in there ever since, nested, waiting for this hate speech bill to come in. So, uh, the, 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 their pathological degeneracy cannot be prosecuted by law. Hence, the, the enthusiastic, gloating giddiness of many of them on the left over this uh, over this hate speech bill in Ireland, it basically allows them open season upon children without consequences. So if you're from another country, I want you to tell the world, and I'll explain why I'm doing this, I want you to tell the world that by default, every Irish politician must be, and civil servant, bureaucrat, etc., must be considered a paedophile by default. And you, we have evidence we can show up the enthusiastic defense of that drag queen story time here in Ireland by certain politicians and so on. And that when an Irish politician walks into a room with a bunch of foreign dignitaries, the first we want the situation where the foreign dignitaries that think to themselves, look at this fucking pervert, look at this child molester in their minds until the hate speech laws are struck off the Irish stat books. You're not going to do it by running for elections. You're not going to do it by playing their rules because the rules are set against you. You're going to play it by the by the rules of the culture war they foisted upon us. We're giving it back to them. We successfully did this with the lockdowns and the vax pass. We do we'll do it again. Remember, we're dealing with people who are driven by perversions and compulsion. They're either psychopaths or they're nonces. And both are not intelligent enough to win the culture war. They're only good enough to become a totalitarian mechanism to enforce it. You want a situation where if an Irish minister for the environment walks into a foreign delegation, everyone thinks he's a nonce. In the same way that everyone used to think that an Irish Catholic priest was a nonce. This is, we have to create a default culture of that. This is the culture war they brought upon us. We're giving it back in their own coin. We're playing by those rules. Now, our rules, our theater of operation is the culture war foisted upon us. Okay. Our zone of operation has not been fully defined. I would like to make an attempt to define this right now. Where we are in Ireland right now is a direct result of the 2012, I think it was, water charges protest. The water charges protest was a movement in Ireland that gathered up large numbers of people in order to stop the implementation of water bills. You're basically claiming that water was a, a, re, a, poor, a limited resource in Ireland, a country where it rains 300 days of the year probably, and uh, has the biggest river on these islands because it, the Shannon that has to drain out vast quantities of water. Now we know that there are infrastructural charges regarding water delivery and so on, sanitation. But this was purely a corporate greed. Public-private partnerships are the very definition of fascism. Corporations getting the government to pay for, for using the taxpayer to pay for their stuff, and then they put a meter on it and collect without, without investing in the infrastructure. We see this everywhere. What we what what the traditional the traditional definition of a of a fascist country is controlled by corporations. Today we call that public private partnership. And Irish people rose up against this in two thousand and twelve. However, it was actually a ruse. The movement was used by the Irish establishment to find the next generation of fake activists. And this is why Brendan Ogle, an extremely sinister individual who apparently somehow went from being a train driver from Athlone to controlling everything for, for a period of time then, the narrative surrounding protest. And that's why when they had the, the 1916 event and the Save Moore Street thing where the, the 1916 leaders of the uprising held their final government meeting, he stood there talking about the diversity of the 1916 movement as if it was made up of uh, the same kind of people you see in a Coca-Cola ad. No, it was made of Irish men and Irish women, predominantly Catholics and Protestants. Uh, that's what it was made up of. That was the diversity. It was the standard demographic of the country. It was not, it was not uh, the, the cast of some woke musical as he tried. And then this, this happened all over. This happened. 
And many of the people who are on the forefront of the Irish culture war today spawned, gestated or coagulated out of the water protest. It was to give people a false impression that I'm not paying a water bill, so everything this guy now or this woman now says is sacrosanct. No, you didn't pay a water bill now. The reason why you went to protest the water charges was not so they could implement this hate speech law. There's a direct line between okay this is the this is the this is the culture war we're dealing with now what do we do on the other side of this culture war in order to deal with it well we did we dealt with it very effectively during the whole rona nonsense so that was supposed to be a permanent a, you know digital id pass which are your yearly needle craft so you couldn't travel and enough was said no in order to get it to stop it and all we need is a no so don't be thinking don't be getting caught up in this Christian mindset of the we're gonna wake up the masses. The masses the masses are are predominantly animals. You know, those things that the, the, the so called the likes of Zbigniew Brzezinski, Saul Alinsky, who I'll talk to in a moment, and Henry Kistner said about the masses is completely true. They have most of them have not stepped into consciousness. Therefore you cannot rely on them. What you have, you only need a tiny minority, probably less than ten percent, than fifteen percent, ten to twenty percent range, to literally get change the, cha the 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 things you want from a totalitarian system to change it. Okay, that's all you need. Proof: uh, the Catholics in Bavaria in the nineteen thirties stopped the German, the SS from exterminating disabled and handicapped people and people in mental assignments. Uh, with very little protest and got away with it. Why? Because the the, the Nazis said, "Well, we, we're not going to get them away. We're not going to be. We're not going to, you know, kill people with Down syndrome in Bavaria. We'll just do it in other states." So remember, we're not fighting for a free world here. We're not fighting for a a Coca Cola ad of standing on a on a on a uh, on a hillside of all different races going, I'd like to teach the world this thing. You're fighting for your immediate zone of operation. You understand that? And when you step outside the demarcation lines of the zone of operation, it dissolves into my, an unfocused miasma. Now, let me give you an example. Telegram. Telegram is an appalling place if you care about Ireland. Why? It's full of nut jobs. It's full of people who live in an echo chamber of like, we'll get the bastards. It's filled with it's filled with genuine racism, anti-Semitism, and it's a hellhole of stupidity. Furthermore, if we're gonna fight the culture war, you're not gonna fight it in and in an alcove or an echo chamber or a back alleyway that everyone ignores in somewhere like you know Telegram. You've got to take it to them. So therefore, our place in the culture war is very much in the mainstream, okay? So deal with it. You're going to have to deal with Facebook. You're going to have to deal with Twitter. You're going to have to deal on YouTube. You're going to have to deal with it in your workplace. Like I said, drop a truth bomb, move on, and, it, it, and everything else. This is how it's done, okay? You're not going to be giving sermons on the mount like you've been programmed by Christianity and then stand up and everyone's going, you're right and we were wrong, we will follow you. This is a zone of operation that has to be strictly curtailed into the limits of possibility and potentiality. Understand that. Do not move outside your zone of operation. So if your zone of operation is taunting a, an, a, a magnificent part of our Irish bardic tradition is to taunt the enemy, memes okay memes memes taunt the enemy on the other side of that you have people who are intellectual who can write uh, essays and articles that reach a level of intellectual compatibility that's that does the same thing on that level taunts at uh, taunts on the street taunts on the street taunts on the battlefield uh intellectual battles culture war at the you know at the middle ground this is a this is key to both things the humiliation of the the taunting of the um you know this the, the two-fingered salute to, the, to them make puts them off kilter memes are an effective form of counter propaganda in fact they're the, they're, they're probably the greatest form of counter propaganda 
ever that has ever been accessible to a to a people's movement, a freedom movement, a cultural freedom movement like we have now. So let's take this a step further, okay? Now there's things I've been telling you about. I from this point now on, if I hear anyone who claim and even if I've agreed with them calling an Irish politician when they address them by their first name, they're immediately out. By by summer 2023, you can no longer be part, I don't care who you are, even if we're friends, you can no longer be part of the cultural warfare to defend their peak, our culture if you're still calling Irish politicians by their first name. And don't give me this shit, I'm, I'm making fun of Michal. No, you're calling him Michael, okay? Michal. That's what you're doing, okay? You call them, you address them in it. You're, you're in. Remember, you're now an intelligence operative. Okay. Remove the pronoun. Replace with the specimen. It's not he, her, Michael, Leo, John, Mary, Frankie. It's you replace that with the specimen. You remove the pronoun, and it becomes an it. Remember, you're dealing with an it, not a person. They don't see you as an individual. They don't see you as a person. They don't see you as an autonomous human being worthy of respect. Why are you fucking giving it back by calling them Leo, my Michal, Joan? Ah, Jesus, give us a bit of our freedom. They are out. They are out of the movement from as far as I'm concerned from this moment on I don't care what good work you've done you are a cancer within the cultural warfare you have already surrendered you might as well hold hand over your infant children to the pedophiles in government you have already lost calling them by their first name you address them by their second name their surname or you address them by their position deputy, minister, and then put their second name onto it, okay? This terrifies them. There is nothing that rocks the consciousness of an Irish politician with greater sense of terror and loathing than Irish people no longer calling them by their first names. They have used that for decades now as a, as a system of control. And if you're still doing it, you deserve to be a slave and get the fuck out of this movement and go grab your pride flag. Because you're not, you're not worthy. By summer 2023, you're not worthy to be here. Now, truthers and stoners have to be all removed in, a, in the same way that in previous insurgency movements, uh, alcoholics were removed from the rebels, from the the insert uprisings and so on. The, you know, we all know what happened at the Battle of Tara. The British and the Orange Men snuck in, not the Orange Men, the Loyalists, snuck in barrels of whiskey and the stupid fucks got drunk the night before. So when all they had to do in the morning was mop them up and slaughter them all inside the, uh, the, the, church, the churchyard at Tara. And then a final insult, you know, pick up the Leofal and put it on top of their mass grave to say, that's the end of you Irish. And it's still going on to this day. There's no difference between the the the, the, the Leofal being being dis desecrated and put on the grave of Irish drunks who are too stupid to say sober the night before a battle. Our you know fellas going Leo Tony, yeah Jesus, give us an old freedom, will ya? You know, and th those assholes are out of our lives big time. And don't be supporting anyone in the alt media who continues to do this they're on the wrong side they're the enemy they're 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 the enemy within truthers okay you know I, I, i've dealt with them for so long they're fucking useless let them die on telegram okay they will say things like thomas sheridan endorses Saul Alinsky. Yeah. i've read them on Saul Alinsky. i've read them on why same reason I study Freemasonry. I want to know how they operate and how they got the power. Why? So I can defend against it when it's used against me and pay them back in their own coin. So, you know, being afraid of triangles and all this stuff and, you know, this kind of thing. Or this kind of, oh, this devil sign, all this stuff. Uh, you're basically a lamb to the slaughter and you've just put mint sauce on yourself.
you have to define not only define the demarcation lines of the zone of operation but also the contextual enforcements that take place within it we do this in a completely different way than the uh, than the stormtroopers the stormtroopers of the establishment who just who throw around terms like far right that people who are probably traditionally always liberals or even like me an anarchist and uh, i can't stand the left or the right and uh, they will call they, they they implement slurs because they don't have an intellectual argument you're dealing with an animal made of or you know remember that when you saw remember that march when the people in ballymoon and then east wall were going by the Shelburne hotel and you had all the civil servants throwing insults at them you were not dealing with human beings remember you were dealing with its you were dealing with specimens once they enter once you enter into the zone of operation your adversary is a specimen it's not a an individual why because that's how they see you and this is why they were screaming at them and call look it's just stadious you know thank god we have those videos because i think a lot of them are, are probably going to be thinking about emigrating right now because their futures aren't looking very bright but um the people walking by were shocked by the names they were being called why because it's low energy low intelligence and that's the rules they use. We don't do that. We don't call them names back. Yes, we use our memes and all this stuff. Because of the, the, the greatest weapon in a culture war is quite simply the truth and common sense. Because they are both aligned with the, the laws of nature. And that pendulum will always swing back into an equilibrium. So no matter how much they scream slurs at people, the pendulum will always swing back. Remember this. Remember this. But we cannot allow ourselves outside that. So, you know, one of the re in Ireland, you know, we, it's telescopic philanthropy has been a, you know, a big deal. Now they destroyed the nationalist movement in Ireland by having Sinn Fein morons waving Palestinian flags, and I knew the culture war was big time on 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 you know going when I saw the commemoration of the 1916 uprising here in Ireland, and I saw more well, Sinn Feiners with more Palestinian flags. Uh, Hamas flags, uh, Islamic Jihad flags, than they had Irish tricolours or any other kind of Irish patriotic flag. Sinn Féin is, was destroyed, its, it's traditional base of people who might have cared about Irish stuff have been destroyed by pushing them out into the world of Palestinian rights and nothing to do with Ireland. Woke. You know, sometimes they didn't maintain their area zone of operation. In our zone of operation, we don't give a fuck about Palestinians. Now, I don't mean that we don't give a fuck about people suffering. We haven't got time for that. If your house is on fire, yeah, the last thing you should be worried about is that there's a weed, there's weeds growing in your neighbor's garden. That's what they want, okay? We don't move beyond that zone of operation. We don't get ourselves diluted. We don't allow infiltrators to come in and say, ah, but what about the poor refugees? That's not our concern. We have genuine compassion and genuine help for refugees of the Ukrainian war who are, as long as they can prove, they're actually from the Ukraine. Okay, remember that. Not if their name is Mohammed al Sulfata, you know, from Syria, or not even Syria, from anywhere in the Islamic world or Africa, and who has no documentation. They cannot be considered. If the establishment can consider, consider anyone who steps into Ireland without papers a Ukrainian refugee by default, we're using the same rules on them. You're a pedophile and a traitor by default. How those generalizations work when you throw them back at the establishment, very badly. They love to impose generalizations, but they get very uncomfortable when you give the generalizations back. The zone of operation requires this. It requires a clean head. Not watching telegram videos where some guy, some truth has pricked holes in tomatoes and said things like, they have been injected with poison by the Illuminati when he probably just did that. There's no context. There's no nothing. There's no chemical analysis. You see that you ignore it. That does not affect me. What affects me right now is they've moved 200 men without passports or documentation into a neighborhood. And I don't know if one of if 199 of them are decent human beings. It's not worth the price of one rapist among them. This is why we have immigration control. 
And that's all we're asking for. Why? Because it's fair to people who have, who want to come to our countries and live the dream. It's, and enjoy our lifestyles. It's fair to people who are genuine Ukrainian refugees and not, and not parasites who jumped on the, you remember that? If someone shows up in this country or your country uh, on the tail of the genuine suffering of the people of Ukraine, what does that say about them? These are the same people who would go into your house while it was on fire and not help you escape, but would rob your house. They're dishonest people. They immediately entered upon a lie. And a lie capitalizing upon the genuine suffering of the Ukrainian people. Be specific. Don't be going, ah, oh, the bloody foreigners, ah, oh, the bloody foreigners. There are many immigrants and foreigners in this country who are wonderful people that I welcome here with open arms. But like everything else in life, the one word that stops you from being a fool, whether it's a simp in a relationship, the idiot at work, the grunt in the office, the fool that everyone mocks or the pronoun pronoun the politician is lap pandering and laughing to and that word is discernment within the zone of operation a discernment is a dogma discernment is a is the is the, the code of the code of honor just because one thing is true doesn't mean it, 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 another thing isn't distractions are everywhere Focus on what you know to be true and what feels true to you. Adult hysteria. This is why we can't have stoners and we can't have truthers because they lack discernment. And eventually you might have somebody who was a great asset making flat earth videos. It's not good. Even if they're interested in that stuff, keep it to yourself. The zone of operation is clear, concise and tight. It's clear, concise, and tight. And you operate within that zone of operation. When I am in that zone of operation, I make it very clear that that's where I am. When I'm outside it, doing all kinds of the other things I'm interested in, it's obvious I'm not. We are in a war uh, that's of the psyche and of the mind, of the culture and the heart and the soul. And it cannot be fought as a miasma of hysteria and non sequiturs define the zone of operation in your own life and then define the zone of operation which you can actually affect yes you may be disabled and you're disgusted about what's going on you can share memes you can write articles you can make videos remember the, the battlefield is in the mind this is it this is where we fight it this is where we transcend and we've won it already. It's only a matter of time. When you have the likes of the whole world now looking at the Irish government and saying, oh, they've gone way too far with their, this hate speech law. And rather than Irish politicians going, eh, oh, you know, maybe we're looking bad in the eyes of the world. They're going, oh, it's proof or that we're right. You're dealing with the mentally ill. You're also dealing with psychopaths. Psychopaths will twist anything and gaslight anything to justify it. You'll find that many of these people are spouses that are involved in organ uh, big pharma companies that produce, uh, you know, puberty blockers. And yet they're passionate about woke and pride. Why? Cha-ching! Keep it in the zone of operation, eyes on the prize. Remember, if any start, they're still calling politicians in Ireland by their first name in 2023 and claim to be against them. They have nothing to do with them. They're out of the field. Soner's truth is you're out. We have a focus zone of operation. You've got to be in there. And I guarantee you, do this in your whole life, you'll have a very happy life. Remember, you're not on the hill giving the servant on the mount. You're not holding a Coca-Cola Coca surrounded by every race that are going, I want to teach the world to sing. You are. This is my immediate concern. What do I do to keep pathological entities from coming into it? Zone of operation. Take care of yourself.